from the little bighorn, let's go to the end mm. at Camp Robinson where he where he ultimately died. Uh, why was it that the Indians seemed to turn on him in the end? Well, it's to do with with politics, as is so much in in our in our lives. He was a warrior. I was stressing that at Little Bighorn just the year before his end, and he remained that. He did. He had no ambitions to be a civil chief uh, like all the contemporaries, like Red Cloud and, and so forth. But his fame thrust him willy-nilly into a position of great political influence. And so when he arrived at the agency in the spring of 1877, um, as he understood it, General Crook had undertaken to recommend a separate agency, a separate reservation in the northern hunting grounds. He actually um, had expressed... um, a preference for a site very near where Sheridan is today. Uh, and he thought this was all on the agenda. But as the summer of 1877 moved forward, it became plain that this was not realistic. These expectations were not realistic. And most Lakota people uh, had no wish for another year of war. I think Crazy Horse, on the other hand, was determined to keep that northern reservation, no the separate agency in their hunting grounds, at the top of the political agenda, and people backed out. So what I'm saying is that you know, I don't think you know we shouldn't be looking at saying Red Cloud's a bad guy or Spotted Tail's a bad guy and Crazy Horse is the good guy. It's not you know it's not that simple. These are guys you know fighting for political gains so in a way it not, not much has changed yeah. exactly so you know and so we, we have to see these people as real people you know uh, not impossible saints which you know some people would like that nor as mindless savages as previous generations might have viewed they're real people living in real time with real problems and never more so than in 1877 you know what a pressure cooker that must have been for those people um, you know, it, it's like, you know, the, the pressures those people were under would be like if, you know, some guys came down from Mars today and said to us, you know, what you're doing, it's all wrong. <laughs> You've got to live a completely different way. And how would we react, you know, sure. especially if, if, if they suddenly handled all the political levers? So it's no wonder that things, tragic events unfolded. Yes, a lot of Indians... Uh, a lot of Lakotas decided that Crazy Horse was too much of a loose cannon. They were afraid that things were going to slip into war and that their women and children's uh, positions now, you know, living right next to Fort Camp Robinson, Camp Sheridan and so forth, their, posi- their positions were that much more vulnerable. They did not want to run the risk of uh, being dragged into a new war. And so... They tried to sideline Crazy Horse, but then he made his break to Spotted Tail Agency, where he was detained, brought back to Camp Robinson, Red Cloud Agency, the following day. And in a tragic sequence of misunderstanding, uh, when he's taken into the guardhouse at Camp Robinson, he tries to make a break for it and is bayoneted um, as he exits the guardhouse. It's a tragedy. It's, you know, it's a tragedy in Shakespearean terms, you know. 